So welcome to another video and today's video I'm going to be going over this tutorial of how you can do this technique which I think it's called the fly lapse merger of a drone like flying and a time lapse or hyperlapse. I've seen these sort of videos being done using Google Earth Studio. And I've been playing around with this for the last couple of days and I thought I would create a tutorial just to show you how you can create really cool drone footage or drone videos with this technique using Google Earth Studio without going outside to actually fly your drone. I do want to say though that this doesn't really look super realistic because it's all 3D rendering. It looks like mushed up Blender files, 3D files that haven't been touched up. So if you use apps like Luma where you're able to take a photo of your scene and turn that into a 3D scene, that's what it looks like where everything is still a little bit not fully refined or you can can't tell that there's a lot of detail. So I'll go over how you can do this step by step and at the end I'm going to talk about what else you could do to spice things up. But before we continue let's talk about the sponsor of today's video Intmind. Intmind is an AI powered photo editing tool and it comes with a bunch of features. Some of my favorite ones are AI background. Once you upload your portrait or product photo into Intmind it automatically cuts it out and you can select from the multiple backgrounds available to add in your own background. Another feature I like is this AI enhancer tool. So I have this low resolution photo of myself from many years ago and I upload this and I'm going to use the AI enhancer tool. As you can see, the resulting image has a lot more quality than the original ones. Another tool that comes in super handy is this magic eraser. It lets you quickly remove objects, text, logos, and unwanted people from your travel photos. The next feature is particularly useful for product photography, and this is AI Shadow. I took a photo of this product with my phone, I upload this into Intmind, it automatically gets cut out and a shadow gets added. I can pick a shadow that I like and now I have a photo that you can use for an e-commerce store for your product. You can create a free account and access all of Intmind features. There'll be a link in the description below. Thank you again Intmind for sponsoring today's video and now let's get back to the tutorial. So first you have to go to Google Earth Studio and if you do not have access yet, you can just click on try Earth Studio and you should be able to access it really quickly. So I've already started with a project, but what you can do is go to file, click on new. You can either select a blank project or select one of these quick starts that will allow you to quickly have those keyframes set up in place. So for this video, I actually use the orbit effect and I've went to find different towers around the world and I did a little orbit around them. So I created this cool drone orbit transition sort of shot. So, but we'll go to, just click on blank project over here and we'll just name this Toronto cause that's where I'm living and then we're gonna try that. Uh, dimensions, you can leave it at either 1920 by 1080 or in 4K, 3840 by 2160. Duration, let's do, let's do about maybe 10 seconds. So 10 times 24, because I'm gonna do 24 frames per second is 240. Click start. And from here, you can play around the globe, but there's a quick way to get to where you need to go. And that is by typing it. So Toronto, let's do CN Tower. And once you're here, you can see that there is this square, this aspect ratio of 16 by nine in this square. And this is where, and this is the final render that you're going to have, but you do get to see what's outside this bounding box. So you can click your mouse and just move this around on the scene. You get your timeline at the bottom, and this is where you'll be able to add those keyframes to animate that camera, which can get really cool. Uh, here you can select the different types of uh, different screens so that you know where you are in the world. You can also hold on to different buttons. You can hold your mouse to move this around. If you hold on command or control, you can work on that altitude and tilt at the same time, which is pretty cool. And if you hold on, uh, again, command and control, and then you move it left to right like that, you can do some sort of a, a pan or an orbit. And if you just grab and go forward like that and you just drag it 
either forwards or backwards, you're able to do that traditional like pinch to zoom kind of thing that you do on Google Maps. You can also zoom in and out with your mouse and you get to do that. But we're going to try to avoid that zoom in and out as much as possible because I want to create that effect where the drone is actually just flying through the city as opposed to a camera zooming in and out because that illusion can get a little bit tricky and zooming in and out may make it not as realistic. So let's start simple. We'll start maybe over here. Um, and to add keyframes, all you need to do is select all of these keyframes here and just uh, and then that adds keyframes to that first spot. You can hit on play over here and that will play the video. You can also hit spacebar. So let's say for about the first 12 or 16 frames, I'm going to click and sort of come in over here. Oh, not that. And I'm going to select all the keyframes here. As you can see, uh, these ones turn yellow. That means that there has been a change. And if you want to update the keyframes to what you have here on the screen, you can click on each of them, but I'm just gonna click this and add a keyframe for all of those values. If you happen to change something and not click on the keyframe, next time you go and play the video, all of that's gonna be lost. It has, it would not be recorded. So this is what I have so far and from over here, I am going to go forward and perhaps lower that altitude. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that's pretty good. So as we go along, I'm going to go forward. Oh, not that. I don't want to do that. Not that. Oh, this magic mouse, that's the problem with the magic mouse. So that was a pretty cool shot. I like that, so I'll add keyframes there. That was pretty cool. And this is what I tell, what I mean by all of these looking like pretty bad, like uh, 3D sculptors, sculptures, 3D sculpts. I don't know what the term is, but that's what it looks like. So once we're here, I'm going to go forward and lower that altitude a little bit more. Maybe like this. Uh, and click the keyframes here. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, not too bad. I can also fine tune it, but for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm not going to fine tune this too much. But once I get here, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna start to, to pan the camera. Uh, actually this way, let's see. Okay, around here, I will go forward a little bit more. Okay, let's see that. So there's many things that you can do. You can adjust the uh, latitude and the longitude of the scene of where you are, the altitude, oops, something happened there. The altitude, the pan, the tilt, a lot of pretty cool stuff that you can do. You can also select keyframes here and delete them if you're not happy with them. And another cool thing that I really like is that you can also smooth in these keyframes. So for example, over here, I can select the ones at the front, right click and select one of these. So I'll do ease out, maybe ease in on these ones, or I can just select all of them and go to auto ease. That's pretty cool. So let's just do something more. And add more keyframes. So this is what I have so far. And what we'll do is keep going. And the key thing here is to play this as you start keyframing because you want the movement to look natural. If you want this to look like a drone flying by, you have to think about the tilt and the movement going forward because you don't want it to look like it's off or that it's not realistic or that it doesn't look like a drone just going forward. So just play around with that with the different angles and how far you go before you 
rotate it or pan that camera because that's really important. But I'll continue here for a little bit more and then we'll jump into what I wanna show you next. All right, so this is what I have so far. I can go ahead and fine tune it, but for the sake of this tutorial, this is what we're gonna leave it as. So it's pretty cool what you can do with this. So in, next thing you can do is click on render and just export this. And there are a couple of things to keep in mind. So we can pause this first. Um, the Google copy, Google Earth copyright is going to remain there because obviously this is copyright material. So you cannot use this in any commercial work whatsoever, unless you have specific permission from Google. But we'll save this. There are two ways to export this. There is the video, which we will not do because this will record or export to the cloud. And uh, I think it's still in beta sort of thing. So the best thing to do and the highest quality to export. So the highest quality that you can export this thing is an image sequence in JPEG. And you might be asking, well, that's not really a video. Those are just photos, but I'll show you how you can import that into your video editing software to make that into a video. So frames, we'll export all of these frames. Dimensions, we'll keep that as the same. Uh, attribution position, this is this, this Google Earth watermark. We'll leave it all the way over there. You're able to also export uh, tracking data for After Effects or for JSON. I'm not sure what that one is, but JSON. And there is also an option for a map style. So you can do this exploration style that adds in those location icons with the names of the places, uh, everything, and just, just too much stuff. So we just have a clean version of that. Texture is high and you click on start. This only works with the Google Chrome browser, so make sure that you're using Google Chrome. And one, this is exporting. Unfortunately, I don't think you can go and browse around other folders um, or other tabs in your Chrome browser because it's just going to pause. But you just have to wait for this to render. So after everything has exported, you'll go into your video editor of choice. Right now I'll be using Premiere Pro. I can go all the way to footage where all my image sequences are. Click on the first one and make sure that you have image sequence selected. Click on import. Your images will now be compilated into a video as you can see right here. So now we can just make that a composition or a sequence here. This is where you can add in a little bit of spice to spice things up. So what I will do here is go to effect controls and I'm going to scale this up a tiny bit and have scale, position and rotation turned on for keyframes. So as I come in here, I'm going to have a little bit of rotation. And as I keep going, I'm going to keep rotating to the opposite side. And this is going to uh, be able to give you that sort of first person view drone sort of perspective, like the FPV drone view. And I'm right there. And as I come here, I'm gonna rotate my clip a little bit more. So what I did earlier as well is I scaled up my footage to about 120% so that there are no black corners in, in this video when I zoom in and out. So talking about that, a good thing that you could do if you're planning to do this later in post is to not crop in too much when you're doing this on Google Earth Studio, but give it, it a little bit more of a wider look so that you're able to crop in later in post. This is just rough keyframing for this, but once you're satisfied with what you're doing, you can right click and go to ease in or ease out. I'm going to just go to auto bezier and just have all of those just auto smooth and just have everything smoothened up for me automatically. Let me know in the comments below if you'll be using this for any of your projects. I would love to know and hear more about how you're planning on using this. So that's it for today. And here are a couple videos you could probably watch next and I'll see you there.